Hello and welcome. This is another quiet child reading that originally was supposed to be a pick a pile reading, but a lot of cards came out and it would have taken forever to upload all of these readings as one. So here we are. Um, if you are drawn to this reading, then this image may speak to you. This little kitty is either a little cranky because he woke up for a nap, from a nap I mean, or he's like Simon's cat and he's pointing at his mouth and he's saying, feed me. <laughs> he's been taking a nap on the car. And the crystal that is with this pile is Morganite, which provides a boost of strength and courage. It's a crystal of adaptation and change, has strong feminine energy, and it is also symbolic of unconditional and divine love. It is ruled by the planet of Venus, or maybe not ruled, but they're, they're associated, let's say. And uh, the astrological sign that goes with it is Libra, the sign of balance and justice. And the numerology is three, even though this card says four. So perhaps 34 or 43 or four or three are meaningful for you. Um, it is associated with the heart chakra as well as the crown chakra and it cleanses and opens up the heart chakra. So we're just going to jump right in. No idea what we're going to find. I'm sorry I had a temper tantrum. Thank you for helping me work through my feelings. I have a social media issue I really need help with. Kids at school aren't nice to me, so I hate going to school. I love you. And the changes my body is going through make me feel weird and insecure. So the, the first thing that I'm feeling is that there's some adjustment issues and that there's a lot of repressed emotion. Um, part of it has to do with self-esteem. Um, the social media issue relates to how this child sees their peers in relation to themselves and how this added disparity, I guess, or difference, although there's nothing wrong with difference at all. In fact, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Diversity is great, but when you're growing up and having a hard time figuring out who you are, to get weird input from others, particularly on social media, it um, can really mess with a kid's head and distort their view of themselves. And the kids at school not being nice also adds to this poor self-image that this child has. And um, that's why you're having issues, or this child's having issues and you're helping them through it, which is beautiful. But your child's very loving and they don't say it, but they are appreciative that you don't punish them for how they feel. Because they already feel like they, that their feelings are wrong. Um, the other kids are not kind and are prone to point out any sort of differences that um, the child displays as far as the way they express themselves. So that tells me that the child really needs support around how they view themselves when they're exposed to the lens of their peers. Um, to be able to have a, a steady and stable self-image that they can actually hold on to that's solid, that is not going to be something that when they walk out of the door of the supportive environment of your, your love and nurturing, it's not going to be something that's going to be easily changed or molded or malleable. Um, 
I mean, all kids are going to have, you know, variables in, you know, fine tuning who they are as they develop and find out what it is that they enjoy and what it is that they relate to and resonate with. But there should be a, a core that is something that is not able to be disturbed. Um, and the foundation of that is feeling good about yourself. You can't have that core if you don't have at least some kind of affection for how you're made. And that's part of what this child is going through is they're having a really hard time accepting themselves as they are. Um, it's, it's wonderful to want to, to grow and to change and develop into the, I, you know, something close to the idealistic version of yourself that you have in your head that you want to be. Um, and it's great to aspire to be something grander, but we need to be okay with who we are as, as we are. If nothing ever changes about us. Um, and the thing about having this, this problem with self-acceptance is the other kids pick up on it and it's like sick animal syndrome where you have an animal that's not doing well and the other animals instinctually gang up. Kids that are prone to act out their own issues by picking on others um, sniff out vulnerabilities. It's not a, a purposeful thing. I'm not saying that there's, you know, a, a bunch of, you know, terrible children or anything. There's, there's no such thing as a terrible child. There's just misguided children, misdirected children, and children that need more than they are getting. But what I'm saying is that unconsciously, subconsciously, they sense that your child has issues and the with themselves then the issues they have with themselves project an energy that sort of draws in the bullies for lack of a better word I, I'm not sure that it's to the point where they're actually being bullied but they're being harassed they're being if things are being pointed out to them that they don't appreciate and that hurt them so that's that's what I am getting off of these, but I'm also getting that the child is so appreciative that they have your love. They love you so much and you are their guiding light, their beacon. That that one voice, because if you just have one voice that's positive, then that's enough to tether you to the possibility that more can be positive. So it's beautiful that you do this for your child. And it's beautiful that they appreciate it and their higher self thanks you. Okay, let's see what Michael says. Let go of fear now. So Archangel Michael, please help me feel safe and deserving of your guidance. Thank you for clearing me of heavy, toxic, or ego-based thoughts or feelings. So, again, this is this is a dealing with the sense of with ego, the self-identity, but it's not ego in a way of how we typically think of ego when people say ego. The sort of go-to shorthand for that is uh, excessive pride in oneself, and that is absolutely not the case here. Ego also means things that are fear-based, um, which it would be kind of cool if we could <laughs> find a way to actually say it, you know, straight out that this is also part of it because of that shorthand. Um, but the issues with self make this child fearful of going to school, fearful of 
new interactions with people, fearful of interactions in general. And even if they don't show that, it's something that they always carry with them. Um, almost like a little doubting Thomas Fogg in their pocket <laughs> that uh, is, is right there to sort of say, uh-oh, you know, you better watch out here or, you know, they're right about you or all sorts of unhelpful things that sort of, they just stay beneath the surface because the child doesn't know how to communicate these issues to anyone, even to you, in a way that really can help them communicate them fully. There's so much push down and that's the, with the, the temper, it, all these things push down, basically the, the stuff at the top pops off, but it doesn't clear out everything. There's still all these sedimental layers of things that have been pushed way down. And because there's the temper issue, it is a, a thing where the child is feeling badly about the way that they express themselves when they are upset. And because it's such a, an issue that, that this issue with self-acceptance and how they're viewed by their peers. It is um, upsetting to them and so it's easy for them to correlate that with temper tantrums which they don't want to have and they feel out of control having. They don't like feeling out of control um, and they, they get embarrassed. They get embarrassed by the temper tantrums and they get embarrassed by these deeper emotions and the temper tantrums is a, it's a little easier because obviously it's it's coming out so there's a there's a level of, of acceptance inside the child that favors just slightly but favors the temper tantrums over the more difficult insecure emotions and so that's why the temper tantrums get out but the more difficult, insecure emotions don't get out because anger is very offensive as well as being defensive. But these other emotions are made of vulnerability. And so even though you are a safe space for this child, because of the peer pressure, um, the, the pressure of this incorrect self-image that the child is perceiving based on how the other kids treat them. They still, even in the safety of your nurturing support, I feel like there's still something there that is wrong or that puts them in some state of uh, vulnerability or danger of being embarrassed, e even just the mere fact of speaking of it is embarrassing because the, the self-acceptance is so low. But it, it's like this child doesn't want to allow themselves to have these feelings, but they have to have these feelings because they're human and they're having issues with the things that are generating these feelings within them. So um, my initial thought on that, that, that just pops to mind, and we may see it in here, we may not, but um, finding a creative way for the child to begin to express things. In creativity, the, the child can get out emotions, and if you are open to interpreting them, you can, but there is an interpretation that has to go on. It's not going to be like coming right out and saying, I'm sad, or I'm insecure, or I feel silly, or embarrassed, or what have you. The, um, the act of creativity is helping them process the emotions, but it's also the creative work fails the emotions to an extent where 
it's it's a safer way because there's always the backup plan of well no you don't get it <laughs> right so if somebody misinterprets or interprets correctly hits the nail on the head but maybe it's not the person the child wants to interpret it or maybe that you know they suddenly feel embarrassed because it has been interpreted correctly they have this backup plan of, of, of being able to say well that's not actually what it is um, because it's a it's creativity that can be looked at many different ways so I mean I'm not saying that that is actually that part of it is going on with the child but I'm saying that this is a, a dynamic that is inherent when you process your emotions by using them as grist for the mill to create. And because there is that veiling, because there is that sort of safety plan, then um, it, it's something that once the child gets into opening up to creating in whatever medium, they're going to sense that safety there and it's going to give them almost a kind of permission to involve their emotions and to start processing them and getting them out um, in this manageable sort of area, the safer area. Um, okay. The Sacred Mother's card is Athena with wisdom and knowledge. And I'm um, hearing that this is how the child views you. Um, their sort of like guide and the the one that they can turn to. Um, Athena has this big staff here and the owl is on her arm and she's not going to let anybody hurt the owl. And there is a defensive barrier in a sense with the staff in front of the owl. And it doesn't block the owl and it doesn't keep the owl from seeing or experiencing. But it is a protection. It is a, a sort of defense or barrier, or guard. And this is how this child views you. You give this child a feeling of safety. And I imagine that getting an owl to rest on your arm is probably not the um, most accessible endeavor for everyone. <laughs> You probably have to be a fairly special person in order to have that owl trust you to that extent. And this child trusts you. The unicorn card. Past lives. Let me get down here. Okay, I can't read this quite. Read your past life karma, or release your past life karma. You're an old soul with deep wisdom. Healing your past lives will raise your vibration. That's very interesting. Sorry about the, the blurriness, but um, past life trauma um, can present issues and because most of us are not aware of what our past lives were, we can be completely blinded to those issues and they can trip us up and they can keep us from doing things that we want to do because there is a fear that it's beneath the surface it's not identifiable to be connected with anything organic or tangible or even intangible in this lifetime it just presents itself and it's not even something that can be communicated because you don't know why you don't know what you don't have any information about it you're just experiencing this this obstacle to 
personal development. It's interesting to me the way the female figure here is holding the horses, or actually the unicorns, head close to her with her hand gently around its face. Um, it's very intimate and it's very caring and it makes me feel like a past life issue for this child is around intimacy, around trust, and around being self-actualized, being who they actually are, and being able to trust that the world will not punish them for that. There may have been some sort of bad situation that resulted in harm based on who they truly were, and they were persecuted for it. And because it's the unicorn that's being held close by the female figure, that makes me associate that past life trauma with the unicorn and the reason why I bring that up is because a unicorn, what is more special than a unicorn? So, it's likely that a past life trauma relates to what your child is actually dealing with now, which makes absolute sense to me. Because people like to talk about karma as uh, like it's punishment for things that you do. But that's not always the case. Sometimes karma is having to go through similar situations in this life that you went through in past lives that were not resolved in those past lives. And it's not always a punishment. It's not, it's not actually ever a punishment. It's all about lessons and, and growth. But it's not always about you didn't do something correctly in a past life. It is, uh, it can be, sometimes it can be needing to stand up for yourself, needing to learn how to ignore outside forces, what their opinions are of you. And stand up in your light confidently. Um, to access the strength that your soul has carried with it eternally, that for whatever reason in past life or lives was not able to be expressed and wants very, very much to be expressed because it's a big, big, big chunk of why you're here in the first place. Um, the person that your child is deep down and the person that they will develop into is someone extraordinary and a gift to the world. The world needs that gift. And so the kids at school are kind of the sand in the oyster that is making the pearl, um, helping it form and become a parent. And uh, that is a really uncomfortable process. And it's really tempting to try and get rid of that sand but it's the sand is something that's beyond the oyster's control um, and it's intended by nature to be that way because and my mom told me one time <laughs> if we knew beforehand what we would have to go through sometimes 
in order to get to the next place. We wouldn't ever do what we had to do to get to that next place in the first place. Because we would just be like, oh my god, I cannot go through that. We would not be able to conceive how. And something that I have learned recently is that the universe is very good at withholding certain information until you are ready to hear it. Um, just like in a, a letter that Albert Einstein wrote to his daughter um, about the, the energy generated by love. And he said to her, hold on to this information until people are ready to hear it. Sometimes we aren't ready to hear what is necessary for us to get to that actualized version of ourselves that we have come here with the intent to be. Um, and so it's your child is going to, you wants to avoid peers, wants to avoid dealing with all of this, but actually that is absolutely necessary to get from point A to point, oh, somebody needs to hit me, but to point me, okay? I'm sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it, sorry. Um, yeah, so instead of um, pushing peers away, pushing interactions away, the child needs to have help in developing tools um, that help them deal with the BS that they get from the other kids. And even though that's a more difficult thing to, to face your bullies than to stick your head in the sand, it is also an empowering thing. And even just a step or two in that direction, those initial steps will help this child feel like, maybe I can do this. And maybe I can do this leads to, I think I can. And then we've got the little train that could starting, right? Because I think I can leads to I can. And in that process of I can, the child is also going to be more equipped to work with expressing their emotions and feeling not only safe, not only okay, but good about it. To accept not only themselves, but also the emotions that they have, no matter what they are. So, okay, let's see, the Ascended Masters, El Moria, clear and shield your energy. Um, the child sort of has this expectation of getting this grief from peers. And part of that expectation, there's, there's a, this is an energetic thing, and it's going to take a little imagination to follow me here, because I'm not even sure if I can communicate this in the right way, but there's a way that you can walk into a room when you have an expectation that people are going to interact with you, whether that's a good interaction or a bad interaction, where your energy is kind of extended outward into that room. And so it's very easy for somebody else to grab and pull that energy in the direction that they want to or they decide to or they're just impulsively inclined to, whatever. And then there's another way to walk into a room where it's almost like you have an invisible 
shield of armor because you've already determined before you walk into that room that you are going to walk into that room and you're going to walk across that room and nobody is going to mess with you. And even if they do mess with you, it won't matter because you've already sort of closed your energy, not into where it's repressed, but beneath this invisible shield. Because the, the I guess the best way to say it is this, this energetic, uh, influence of, you know, having the energy spread out towards other people or having it sort of self-contained. It has to do with expectation and it has to do with focus because when it's extended outward, the reason why it's extended outward is because you expect that other people are going to say or do and your focus, therefore, is on other people. Whereas if you have that self-determination, if you have that shielding, then your focus is on yourself and on what you are doing, walking across the room, going to, I don't know, the punch bowl or the shelf in the library or whatever. And that shift of focus is what makes a huge difference. And it would probably also help your child if you can um, teach them to visualize a shield of white light that surrounds and protects them to kind of get them in a, a mind space where it's, it's like an additional little tool or like a, a, a little perk or I, I don't know what the word is but it's, it's, a, it's an extra little thing to go along with that shift in focus like you actually have the, the shift in focus but going through the visualization of shielding yourself, it, it adds to it, it fortifies it, it it's, it's a support for what you're, you're consciously doing because you just taking the moment to concentrate on, on doing something like that, it, it sounds like it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but it does. Because even if the, the child forgets five or ten minutes later that they did that, it's, it's a nice little extra addition, fortification to the conscious decision to focus on themselves and what they think, not what other kids think. Because that's a tendency that we all have. We um, can sometimes get in the trap of paying more attention to what people think of us than what we think of other people. Um, and another thing that might be helpful actually is in talking with your child to ask him to take an objective look at the kids who are being mean to him. The kids who make fun of him or her. I'm saying him. Maybe it is, it is a, it's, a, it's a boy. Um, it doesn't matter because it's going it, to, you know, wh whomever it resonates for. Have them take a look at who is judging them. And turn the tables mentally. And say, well, let's look at them. Is that the kind of person that you would want to be? Absent of the approval factor right take the approval power away for a moment and and just pretend to be this like neutral party and and look and see are the people that judge you what you consider to be good people are the people that judge you like how you want to be 
when you dream of being your best self? Or are they people that do things that you would never do? Are they people who look at others beside yourself who you have issues with? Do they look at other people who you don't have issues with and judge them harshly too? Because if you can show your child that way to look at someone clearly, to see them for who they are, then it will help them to sort out whose opinion they need to pay attention to and whose really does not matter. I had uh, friends when I was in middle school who were supposed to be the good kids because they had nicer clothes and they looked more like the other kids. But they weren't good kids because they were mean to everyone. And they would go on and on about some poem that made them cry and how sad it was because the person in the poem was put upon or in some sort of bad position. But then actual people in their real life who were put upon or in some bad position, they were mercilessly cruel to. And pardon my language, but at, at a certain point, like eighth or ninth grade, I was just sort of like, well, why do I care if they think bad things of me? Because they're all assholes. <laughs> <laughs> so why should I care what assholes think of me? I mean, obviously, I mean, you may not want to have your kid look at it quite in that language, but, and, and I'm sorry, but it's, my mom always said, consider the source. No matter what, whatever information you're getting, consider the source. <laughs> Is the source reliable? Is the source a uh, source that you would go to for information outside of this issue? Or um, is it just, you know, a bunch of yapping? Like the, like the doggy outside. <laughs> okay, the divine animals. I'm good. Sorry, my vision is terrible. Uh, we have hummingbird with miracles. You are the joy bringer. You bless the world with positivity and love energy soars on your shining wings spread the miracle of happiness this speaks again to your child being a gift to this world hummingbirds are very spiritual and there's hyacinths in this picture and i haven't looked up the spiritual meaning but they came up in some readings i was doing my for myself last night and i was and Spirit was pointing them out. And so I was noticing them in subsequent cards after the first one. Because it's like there's some significance to this. So I know that that's something special. I cannot tell you specifically what. Uh, traditionally. Um, but. The hummingbirds are around them. So I would assume that there's probably some sort of nectar there. Um, that draws them. And although it's a weird sort of analogy to make with kids that are being kind of icky <laughs> to other people, um, to put them in the place of the hummingbird, they're drawn to the nectar in your kid, the, the light, the good stuff. But it makes them uncomfortable for whatever reason. Um, and it's also easier when we are jealous of someone because we perceive they have something that we don't have and that we're not able to access 
especially with children who don't have the ability to rationalize with themselves yet they're still developing these things they don't have the uh, the skills needed to to sit down and have a talk with themselves <laughs> that's what adults are there for is to guide them and show them how you do that so um I don't know where I was going with that. I think I got derailed on purpose. I think Spirit just sort of like did a men in black on me there. <laughs> so we'll go on to the next one. But I think you get what I mean. Or meant or was trying to intend to mean. Squirrel. Always prepared. You are the expert of hard work and hard play. Your cheerful and fun disposition is a blessing to everyone. Here we go. <laughs> Your kid's a gift. Don't let life's distractions take you off course. Make a plan for the future, and life will give you all you need. And again, there's focus here. The focus being on your child and your child's particular trajectory. Not the trajectory that other people want to project, for lack of a better word, onto your child. Um, it's, it's a matter of giving your child those things those uh that sort of helping steer your child into the focus of what matters to them because it's easy for us to forget if we're being picked on by other people what really matters to us and we can be picked on about something that if it were not in a situation where we're being picked on it wouldn't it wouldn't be something that we would pick on ourselves about but because other people point it out, suddenly it takes on this importance that it never should have had. And so a lot of giving your kid the tools to be able to have that self-determination and that self-acceptance and, and focus on, on what is really meaningful and rewarding to them is going to come from actually actively steering their focus in that direction and sort of blotting out the matting crowd. You know, it may, it's, well, I know it's definitely going to take a lot because there is just such pressure on children and particularly these days and with social media, um, that it's really, really hard for them. It's hard for adults to sort of blot out the opinions of others. And our society is, is pretty much geared to dissatisfaction and uh, a feeling of not being good enough because dissatisfaction and a feeling of not being good enough sell product. You cannot sell things that, to people that they do not need if they are happy with themselves. <laughs> the way that operates is somebody has to be unhappy with themselves in order to buy something they don't need because they will look at something as being the answer because they are so desperately looking for the answer. And because our society is geared that way and economics and all that stuff, the pressure is on even for adults to be able to stand up in themselves and not worry about what some faction that they would never turn to for advice on anything else cares about. So it's a matter of, of what your child cares about. That's the important thing. Determining the, the social media issue and addressing it and, and perhaps restricting social media. Um, because if your kid is wavering in their self-opinion and they're getting this constant stream of feedback that they're not asking for, it's just being thrust at them, it's, it's, it's kind of just messing up the whole, all of the work that you're going to be doing and that you have done in nurturing and supporting the child. 
there's just, it's noise that doesn't have to be there. And it doesn't need to be there and it's not productive to be there. And it doesn't have to be for everything, but just for a little while. So you can build this momentum of the kid understanding that what the people on social media think of them really doesn't matter a hill of beans to who they actually are. It does not determine who they actually are. And kind of doesn't have a place in it because it's interfering in what makes them feel good. And shielding their energy too giving them a sense of this is your acre that you get to deal with. Other people don't get to plant weeds on your acre. They need to stay on their own property <laughs> and tend to their gardens. When their gardens are perfect, then maybe they can get a job telling other people how to tend their gardens. But that's, and that's the thing about pointing out to them, are these people that you really want to listen to the opinion of because people judge but they don't realize that when they judge um and i mean i'm guilty of this too we all are we don't realize that when we judge someone in effect we're kind of saying unconsciously but i never make a mistake and i'm perfect the way i am and that is not the case we are all human and it is okay to make mistakes and it is absolutely okay and it's part of the bargain that we're not going to be perfect but when somebody judges it's there it's, it's just kind of this it's making this unconscious statement it's fostering this environment where it's a one-way you know uh, situation and if it were two-way then it would be more difficult for them to say anything because it's likely a lot of the things in fact it's very likely a lot of the things that they judge in your child are things that they hate about themselves because we always tend to or we always blah whatever i don't know that but i just know that there is a tendency <laughs> present let's say see because i'm still learning too there's a there's a tendency to, to think that I completely lost it. That's probably on purpose, too. You want me to go on the next card, don't you? <laughs> yes. Yes, they do. They're like, okay, Chatty Kathy, continue onward, please. Sound sensitive. Oh, okay. Whoo. Oh, Spirit got me with that. <laughs> Sound sensitive. Your child is very sensitive to sounds and very sensitive to words words repeat in their head things that people have said and when they're full of things that other people have said then extra information in the outside world becomes just too much of a load on them avoidant attachment yeah they are um, beginning to or are in the middle of using avoidance as protection. And that cuts down not only on their ability to enjoy their life and to feel good about themselves, it cuts down on the amount of information and learning and growth that can happen for them because if there's a potential of everything being painful or critical and we all want to avoid criticism we all want to avoid pain so helping them sort of make that safe zone within themselves by propping up and supporting and nurturing and cultivating those things that make them feel good and make them feel strong and make them feel empowered is part of getting rid of the avoidant 
attachment because your child is likely to it's, it's possible that your child may have pushed you away sometimes when you try and hug them or they may use some other distancing tactic because they care about you so very much so um and then you can imagine how how their their response will be to people that they don't know or that they don't care for if you experience that with them with the amount of love that they have for you flip it and reverse it yeah again that's i think that's referring to the uh, consider the source helping your child get into the habit of not just taking uh, something that someone says about them for gospel or whatever, but actually stopping for a second. And not only flipping it and reversing it on that person and seeing, well, is the thing that that person is picking on me about something that I can see in them? But also, when they when they are used to doing that, or when you get them sort of into doing that, they get a little uh, time on the training wheels of doing that. To get them to stop and consider and think about why might that be so in this other child. So that they can see the possibility of a story behind the judgment. And also so it will help them to keep that other child human instead of demonizing them. Because that is something that it is, I can, as a bullied child <laughs> and bullied adult, I can tell you that that's a, that's a huge temptation to uh, sort of just paint somebody with the, the same kind of blind brush they paint you with to just say okay well that person's bad or horrible or I hate them or whatever and when we do that we lose our own humanity because if we can't see somebody else's humanity we can't see our own letting go of anger cards um, are for helping kids with their extreme emotions. Find opportunities. Say to yourself, each problem I face is an opportunity to improve myself or my situation. Feel inspired. Okay, well, I, I, this is given in good, and I understand that, but it's also hard for me to say, you know, okay, feel like this, you know, it's, but this, yes, is, is the, um, teaching your kid to start to look at problems as opportunities. Teaching your kid that the sand is uncomfortable and it's gritty, but it's polishing the beautiful pearl that they are. Helping that pearl to form and all of its little uh, molecules or whatever to get into the proper arrangement or alignment so that they can be the best them the them that feels the most comfortable for them that feels right because your child spends a lot of time walking around feeling so wrong and cannot even express that without it coming out as a temper tantrum or an irritated tone or an unanswered how are you and just walking into their room and slamming the door the quiet child cards let's see what they say bad dreams are making my waking life nightmarish I need help understanding relationships and social interactions I feel like an outcast, I'm like I don't fit anywhere. 
Please help me fine-tune my hygiene routine in a way that doesn't make me feel icky. So, the angst that your child is experiencing because of these pressures and these unfair opinions of them, these unfair judgments, are disturbing their sleep. It's just like this one long movie that never ends and there's never even a bathroom break. And there's no popcorn, there's nothing. It's just never ending. Um, and here again is because everything is so pushed down the only way that you can really start to understand social interactions is if you're actually experiencing them. And if your child's being avoidant to uh, keep themselves out of pain, or try to keep themselves out of pain, obviously that's not what's happening here. They are in pain. Um, then they're not getting that true social interaction that is going to make these steps of, of achievement almost in a sense for them because each interaction with another child that goes positively is like a brick to form this structure that is the, going to be the house of themselves just like each negative interaction can prevent them from building up a structure. Positive interactions, successes, if you will, will begin to build the momentum of feeling better about themselves. And it's, it's going to be probably, it's not going to be an overnight process. It's going to be a, a slow process because there's there's a lot of tenderness here and there's a lot of vulnerability and there's a lot of feeling of needing to be defended or defensive 24 7 even when they are sleeping they are trying to defend themselves um there's not that feeling of support that a person finds in a safe friend group where you don't have to worry about if someone is being nice to you is it because they're about to do something cruel so everyone can laugh where you can actually trust that someone is being nice because they are nice and because you deserve that and they're they're experiencing issues with with people judging how they look and there's also that feeling of heaviness and depression where they don't want to it's not that they don't want to they do want to but they don't have them the energy to put into making sure that everything is on point in their self-care routine because all of their energy is being expended just defending themselves. Making art. Ah, oh, you're a winner. Think of something you've done that you are proud of. Draw a picture of a medal and write the good thing that you did on that medal. And I would say further, hang it up somewhere that they can see it all the time. Because that's, that's the beginning of, of a fortification. Something they are legitimately proud of that they cannot argue with you about. They cannot say, well, no, that's not true because this or that. Something that makes them feel good, even if it's a small thing. Because you have to start somewhere, right? But your kid is so special. There's, there's so much that's wonderful about them. And there is something there that they themselves are able to see. And so accentuate the positive. Play that up. Not to the point where it's not believable for them. But to acknowledge it 
as being something damn wonderful. <laughs> and going back to that as a guidepost will help them remember who they really are, not who other people are telling them they are. The sun. This is the empathic oracle. And the sun is about clarity and illumination. In the tarot, it's associated with the astrological sign of Leo. And it is the counterpart to the moon. The moon is more about mystery and sometimes it's about illusion and secrets. The sun is about and I love that there's a ray of light coming across this. It's beautiful. But the sun is about clarity and surety and illumination. Nothing hiding in a shadow that's going to come out and, and bite you. No scary monsters. Because <laughs> if there were any, you would see them because everything's illuminated. But I also think there's, there's, this is very like sort of uh, leafy, the, the rays and, and sort of floral with the, the center here and these look like petals and stuff. Then it's about healthy growth and it's about something natural and organic that can turn into something that is something not commonly seen in nature. Because I, I haven't seen any plants like this. They may exist, but you got me. Um, it's how they stand out, but that's not a bad thing. That is one of the most beautiful things about them. So they need help learning how to see that for themselves. These are the Trust Your Vibe cards by Sonia Choquette, who has a YouTube channel. Downtime. Hamster wheel. Well, this is, looks like a rat or a mouse. Well, no, that's a rat. The body's longer. Um, number three is pretty cool because that also corresponds with the Morganite and the numerology. And it's about... In this case, taking a break, we've got the, the gas gauge here, and it's on full. And it's obviously not the rat's gas gauge, because he's on the wheel, but it's on full. Right now, your kid's on empty. Your kid needs something to sustain them. Fuel. Um, better energy. Access to their own energy. Because these kids are sapping their energy. The nightmares are sapping their energy. The feeling bad about their appearance and their hygiene, pardon me, is sapping their energy. The social media is sapping their energy. And it's hard for anyone to get a clear view of anything when they are exhausted or when they are in a state of physical, mental, emotional deprivation almost where they're not getting the support of people that it's easy for a kid to think are the closest thing to being like them which would be other kids in their age group um, because your kid really admires you and doesn't admire themselves so they're not going to be able to look at you and get that sort of same fuel as they could from children who are actually being kind to them. Even though what you give them is so important and it's what keeps them going. But right now it's really almost the only thing that keeps them going. And while it is wonderful that you provide that for them, they need more. They need a well-rounded world where there's not goodness in this area and then all around the rest of it is a deficit. So 
they need to find some sort of relief from this hamster wheel of judgment and emotional pain and feeling icky and sharp and exhausted in their center and just in general and a lot more uh, or not a lot just not to quantify it but more time outside with nature away from all these structures that have these predefined ways of how things should be because when you're outside nature determines that you don't it's not their bell won't ring and then birds fly by <laughs> birds fly by whenever they fly by rain happens when it happens it's not something that's controllable or I mean we can try and I mean, you know I mean there's a whole career in science based on predicting the weather but it's not always a hundred percent accurate and it has taken a very 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 long time to get to the degree of accuracy that it has so I mean basically it's it's an environment that is not controllable but that can nonetheless be so pleasant and so different just the energy is different it's impossible to have this vacuum of negativity when you're outside and the sun is shining and there's a little breeze and you can look at all the little creatures in nature all the different plants you know or you can do something physical and like inhabit your body without there being a whole bunch of people around you that are going to judge your body and you can just experience your body. There's not a lot of mirrors set up outside. <laughs> we can forget ourselves or our predetermined ideas of ourselves. Listen to your heart. Number 44, foundational. And it's like a little these these lines going upwards like a smile almost having more of a heart mind connection um, helping your child connect feelings and thoughts and not get trapped in one or the other helping them to integrate the two so that how they feel about something informs how they think and their opinions can help inform how they feel. So they can begin to get a more um, calibrated or accurate view of what they think of the world and what they think of themselves because so much of their information is coming from what their peers think and from what social media is telling them to think and what their, their feelings that are painful are telling them to think but there's other feelings that they have too and there's other thoughts that they have that have nothing to do with any opinion that anyone else has about them and so it's it's part of like teaching them to focus on those good things about themselves to begin to build themselves up this is part of it this this cooperative relationship between thought and feeling, between mind and heart. Okay. These are cards that are created for kids that have ADHD, but I find that the parenting tips in them, um, they seem to me to, uh, they can apply to a lot of situations where kids don't have ADHD. Um, I'm gonna start with consistency because that sort of speaks to the whole self-determination focus on you know building up and fortifying with good information with nutritious information aim for appealing homework routines my counselor would tell me things I can do like having music or when I could study 
Because I'm listening to music, I'll start singing along and get my homework done faster. Challenge. Getting distracted, feeling scattered, and struggling to get down to work makes studying nearly impossible for kids. I'm going to leave out the part with AHG. The tool here is kids benefit from predictable homework routines, the same time, place, and monitored breaks. Brainstorm a few things that would reduce distractibility and make the homework space more appealing, such as soft music, good lighting, and a comfortable chair. Use a timer to help them stay on task. Reassess in a week. So, this is also kind of speaking to bringing part of themselves that they like, that they don't question, that they are able to accept into every experience that they have, including homework, including things that children and adults would find to be more tedious, tasks and chores and all the stuff we have to do that we don't necessarily want to do sometimes. But with avoidant attachment and just having a lot of negative feelings about oneself in general, it's, it's easy, and I, I don't know particularly why, but it's easy to sort of fall into this thing of dreading everything because the dread for certain things it, that provide bad feedback is so strong that it just sort of bleeds over into everything else and so like bringing music into homework brings something to look forward to in the homework even if there's nothing inherently in that homework specifically to look forward to it's teaching the child how to approach things with a different perspective like going to the store can be seen as a chore or taking out the garbage can be seen as a chore. But if it's seen as I'm going to go on a little walk out in the parking lot and the garbage bag is coming with me and it's not coming back home. <laughs> you know, I mean, just a little bit of like, hey, I actually don't mind doing this. Hey, this will actually, there's going to be something about this, it's not going to be bad at all. Giving them a positive within a neutral or negative space, or a neutral space that can quickly turn negative because they're so used to dreading stuff. Putting a positive in there and then saying, hey, look at that. Look at the positive thing. Because it's teaching them to, to re-steer their minds towards what helps them and not what hampers them. Um, compassion. Focus on what's important. Hunter, age 16, says, They tell me things like, You're not dumb, not like the negative things I say to myself. Challenge. It's hard to know when, where, and what to say to your child because you don't want them to feel bad by nagging or overwhelming them, but you also don't want them to give up either. The tool here is focus on what's most important to both of you. And yeah, again, this is teaching them to give positive attention to those things that matter to them, not to other people. Oh, I mean, you, of course, but you know, not to outside influences that don't have a business being an influence. Kids are doing the best they can with limited resources available to them in a given moment. So, Ask them to focus on what is most important to focus on right now. What serves me about this situation or this task or this moment in time? Not what harms me, but what is the, the good parts of it? What, what is the positive? that I am getting out of this. And then the celebration card is notice and validate. My mom taught me to think positively, says Leela, age 17. If you can ask yourself, what can I do to make this situation a little better? Then you can turn around a crappy situation. 
the challenge. When a child's behavior has been challenging, it's difficult to see a child's strengths and focus on them. It's difficult for your child to see their strengths and focus on them. They have not developed that figurative muscle yet. Once they start developing it and start working it out, exercising it, even if they have uh, if, 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 if it's exercised enough, it'll be like muscle memory because even if they have a period where they're not, there isn't much positive to focus on, they will still be in the habit of looking for it. Um, think about something your child enjoys and does well enough. The next time you see this behavior, make a specific, detailed, positive comment about it immediately afterwards. Ask them to repeat it back to you. That's, you know, that's a great thing. If you see your child doing something that you know is difficult for them and they have to be brave to do it, then tell them, that was really brave of you. And then ask them, you know, can I hear you say that you're brave? Will you admit that to me? Can you do that? And them speaking it out as well helps reinforce that. Um, cause it's, it's easy for them to believe the negative things they tell themselves. It's harder to even get near believing the positive things. So the more they are spoken and validated in genuine ways that the child can feel our genuine and, and so therefore can embrace. There's no way that they can like go in and cancel that out with like some sort of inaccurate reasoning. Um, you know, because their mind has been sort of trained in a sense, not permanently, but temporarily trained by the negative judgments and, and feelings. Um, teach them to, uh, if, if they're actually exercising that, that positivity muscle, for lack of a better word or term, then it's gonna, that, the positive stuff will start to, like, expand. They'll have a place for it, because right now there's not really a place for it, but they'll have a place for it in their world, and the more it's added to, the more it will grow. So this is a beautiful place to start, is to, to take the observation of something that they are doing well, or a quality about them that is beautiful, which won't be hard for you to find because you love your kid just as much as they love you. And you know your kid is a gift. The whole problem is showing them that, teaching them how to see that for themselves so they don't, eventually they won't have to rely on you to show them that so that they can be self-fortifying. And um, I think that's it. <laughs> I... Uh, I really, really hope that this has been helpful. You got a great kid here, and I wish you the absolute best of luck. I know that this is this this is gonna work out for your child. Um, please do definitely uh, get them involved in some sort of creativity to start opening up those repressed emotions. Because even just taking the pressure off, even if in the span of a week or two, nothing physically, tangibly changes in their world, just letting the pressure off of those submerged, sedimental layers of negative emotion that are pushed so far down, it's gonna help them to breathe and to um, open their eyes eyes to the possibilities that exist for them that they can't see now. 
it's just there's just so much weight on them from those emotions and um, art would really really help them in in some fashion I will put some links in the description for you as a resource and any other uh, information I find that I think might help you out so thank you so much for joining me and best of luck to you and your child and lots of love and light take care and be safe